have a poll here. This is a Winfrey SL03 charge controller. It is rated up to 30 amps. Um, and this is what I use to manage my 1000 watts of solar panel on my garage roof. Uh, and then I charge my power wall uh, using this. It is not a MPPT charge controller and it is not optimized for lithium cells. However, um, it is adjustable so you can charge lithiums with it and it is very cheap. So that's basically why I am still using this. I'm waiting until I get a few more solar panels before I upgrade to something a bit, a bit better. Uh, one of my viewers has asked me to explain how to set one of these up. They actually come with moderately okay English instructions. The critical stuff is the setup stuff on this page here. And um, uh, if you're curious about that, I'll put a link up here, uh, the story of that thing there. There are seven settings on this thing, and the, I'll just whiz through them now. The, this is what they call them in the instructions, and this is my uh, translation. Uh, so load working model is for adjusting the way that it turns the load off and on. Now, if you're using this with a power wall, you've probably got an inverter, and in which case you probably have it connected directly to the batteries. You don't have it running out of this um, load switch. But um, if you did run the, your load through this switch, then this setting here uh, adjusts whether or not you can um, turn this off and on using this switch here. That's one of the modes. Another mode is that this is on 24-7 and then there's a bunch of modes for automatically switching the load on just after dusk when the solar panels, the voltage drops down on the solar panels then it turns that on and if you have garden lights for example you can run them in that mode. So that's what the first setting is all about. Light sensitivity is related to the auto light dusk on off function. In my case, because I'm using my inverter connected directly to the batteries, these two are irrelevant. But uh, I tend to leave it on 24-7 uh, mode and that doesn't, the sensitivity doesn't matter. Setting number three is ceasing charging volts, which basically means that is the upper limit that it will charge to. So this is the real well, this one and the next setting are the critical settings for a power wall. Uh, they will tell this unit when to stop trying to charge the batteries. Then float charging volts. So that is a holdover from the fact that this is actually designed for lead acid batteries, which benefit from a float charging scenario. Whereas with a lithium, normally for an optimum lithium charging scenario, you have a, a totally different charging profile. It's not optimum but uh, in in this case it's cheap. So you're getting less optimum charging of your lithium pack but you're saving money on the control. And there's lots of good reasons why if you have the extra money you should use the extra money but if you don't, if you're just using this to charge um, a small number of um, a small power wall then um, you can get away with this. Uh, this one is rated, rated at 30 amps. My general rule of thumb is only trust these cheap Chinese electronics to be as good as half their rating. So I try not to put more than 15 amps into it from the solar panels. So what I actually do in summer is I shift some of my solar panels to a different system so that this can never get more than about 20 amps going into it. And certainly I don't trust it up to 30 amps. So the next setting is the float charging and basically in the way that I use this 
I have that at the next possible setting under the upper charge limit. If I if I had my way, I'd have it set at 28, but the way this is programmed, uh, you can't have the float and the cease charging volts be the same value. So this has to be slightly lower. The next is over discharge recovery volts, which is related to setting 6, which I'll explain first. So setting 6 is low voltage protection, which is, which is fairly simple. Uh, when the battery volts goes below whatever this is set to, in my case 25 volts, then it will turn off the load, um, if you have anything connected here. And then, in, in that scenario, it won't turn the load back on until the battery volts get back up to whatever this is set to, so in my case 26 volts. Then the last setting is temperature compensation, which again is something that is useful for lead acid batteries. For lithium power walls, you set that to zero. And the way you physically do that is it's actually incredibly simple. You hold down the set button and you get into the various settings. So 24 and you can turn that up and down. Uh, the next one is light sensitivity, leave that at 30. Then your cease, volt and cease charging volts, which I've got at 28. Then um, float volts, 27.9. Then the over discharge is 26. The low voltage protection, 25. And temperature compensation, 0. And then you just hold the button down and hey press there, you're done. So that part is really simple. The hardest part of the exercise is working out what your charging limit should be for any particular lithium ion battery. And so, okay, so here's a chart of the possible voltages of a single 1S pack. And 4.2 represents fully charged, and somewhere around down here would be flat. And you can do the same thing for 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S, 6S, and 7S. And if you are running a 12 volt system, then you'll, you'll be running either 3 or 4S. Um, so you'll be looking for um, maximums of either 12.6 or 16.8. And if you're running a notionally 24 volt system, you'll be running either 6S or 7S. Um, I run a 7S um, system, and um, when you're choosing whether to go 6 or 7S, mostly um, it depends on your inverter. Um, some inverters, I know I used to have an inverter that would stop working, at, it was a 12 volt inverter that would stop working when the voltage went over 16 volts so I couldn't run 4S um, I had to run 3S for that inverter but it also it was a funnily enough it was a cheap crappy inverter um, and it would only run between 16 volts and uh, 11 volts so um, if I ran the 3S it would um, crap out down around here so um, nothing was perfect there. Um, now I'm running a 24 volt system and my inverter can cope with um, these voltages quite happily. If you happen to get an inverter that can't cope with that kind of 29 volts then you might want to consider going 6S. 4.2 is universally considered to be fully charged except for some chemistries which go up to 4.3 just to complicate matters. I think I have come across a few of those in my packs and I just run them to 4.2. I treat them as if they're a standard cell and I'm missing out on a little bit of potential capacity because of that but I'm not going to have a separate 4.3 volt system because they're not nearly as common. That's a nice easy target of your upper, upper threshold. 
So if you were doing a 4 inch pack, you, you could set your upper threshold to 16.8 or 29.4. And then your lower limit could be somewhere down around here. However, um, if you wanted to make your pack last a long time, then you don't want to stress it by charging it, fully charging it, and you don't want to stress it by fully discharging it. You want to keep it in a happy medium. And the, the general consensus seems to be if you can keep it between 80% and 40%, wherever that might be, then your batteries will last a very long time. So there are some products out there which, when the display says full, they're actually only 80% full, which is quite clever. However, the, the complication that we have, of course, is um, we've got all sorts of different cells with potentially different chemistries and dis different discharge profiles. So it can be quite hard to work out where that 80% mark is. If you look out on the internet, there are um, a few places where they'll say um, 4 volts equals 80% and 3 volts equals flat um, and a few other numbers in between. Um, but if you look at different sites, each one seems to have its own spread of numbers. And mostly that's because each cell has its own discharge profile, so its own state of charge profile in relation to the voltage. Um, and also because of the way lithiums charge, the voltage is not an accurate indication of how much capacity is in the, in the cell. But in order to set these, you do need to pick a number. So, so you're, you're just going to have to try and find some correlation between state of charge and voltage in order to um, finalise on an upper charging threshold. Um, as I said, you could go 29.4. What I do is go 28, and that is based on a bit of data that I got from... There's a Dutch guy who does an amazing website where he um, shows you lots of information on the charging performance and profiles of all sorts of 18650 cells and charges. Uh, this is a bit of data from one of his experiments. This is the best cell. He had, uh, I think he tested five cells. This was the best cell. This was the worst cell. And you can hopefully assume that your pack will be somewhere in this vicinity. Given that we are dealing with second-hand cells, possibly we're dealing with the worst-case scenario, uh, and maybe that's the safest thing to assume. Um, but um, hard to tell. You could just go for an average of these numbers and, and run with that. Either way, um, you can see that um, for a single cell, 4 volts is roughly in the right ballpark for 80% state of charge. So um, that equates to 28 volts in my 7S pack. If you're running a 4S pack, it would be 16 volts. So you'd set your, you'd set your controller to charge up to 16 volts, and that would be roughly 80%. So that's the upper, upper threshold limit, and that is, um, for the way I've got my system set up, that's the, the key... Um, the key threshold. You don't want to be charging too high. The nice thing about um, only going up to 28 volts is that it gives you plenty of headroom. If my um, individual groups get out of balance, um, one might charge high, one might charge, charge low, I might end up with a situation where one is charging up to 4.1 and one is only charging up to 3.8 or 3.9. Um, I've got more leeway if I'm only charging the whole pack up to 28. Um, whereas if I was charging up to 29.4, then I really, really have to have a good BMS that balances all the packs to be beautifully 4.2 volts. Um, otherwise, 
if I'm only going up to 28 volts, I don't need nearly so good a balancing system. I've also set the lower threshold to 25 volts, and that corresponds to somewhere in the region of flat to 30%, which is a huge spread. Um, my actual comfort zone is more around the 26 volt range, which would correspond to somewhere between 20 and 50%. It's interesting that the nominal value for all these cells of 3.7 volts uh, could actually indicate its 50% state of charge, or it might be way down at 14%. So that, that's kind of uh, interesting. You shouldn't kind of assume that 3.7 is halfway, because for some cells it's not at all. This cell here, it would be more like 3.85 to be halfway between full and, and flat. The other interesting thing to note is that the Opus BT3-3100 will discharge down to 2.9 volts, which is way below zero for these cells. So that's a wee bit disconcerting. And an IMAX V6 is typically set to 3 volts. I think you can change that in the settings. I haven't played with an IMAX V6 for so long I can't remember. The other thing that I have got running on my system is an, an independent low voltage disconnect module. So it's a little board that I got from AliExpress that will disconnect my load um, uh, from my battery when, it, when the battery gets down to 24.2 volts. That is my absolutely worst case scenario. Um, in practice what happens is I come in and every day I look at the overall voltage and if it's below 26 volts I start to get nervous because I know I'm getting below my 40% state of charge lower, lower bound. So then what I often do is I will disconnect some of my loads and maybe I'll choose not to charge my electric bike from the battery and instead run off the mains and so on. I'll do, I'll do load management when I get down below 26 volts, which would correspond to 14.8 on a 4 s pack um, or 3.71 volts on a single pack. So I hope that has been interesting for you. I will put a link to this Google Sheet down below and maybe up there as well, and um, oh, maybe I should extend it out to 14S for those people running um, 48 volt systems. Otherwise, I hope that has been uh, helpful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.